I'm Hannah Mommer from the Nassau Civic Region, and I'm here with Avi Schiffman, a web developer of a COVID-19 information website. Um, so for those of you, who, for those who don't know, what exactly is on your website, and can you expand on the process that it took to create it, and how you found information for that? Sure. Uh, my coronavirus tracking website is basically a dashboard that shows you all the information you need to know about the pandemic and the virus just at a glance. Um, when you visit the website on a mobile phone, for example, which most people do, there's just a quick facts section that covers the entire screen that just tells you all the information you need just right there at a glance, like the total confirmed cases, total deceased, total recovered, all that kind of information is right there. And then you can scroll down and get more detailed information like how many cases there are for every country and all that other information. And then you can scroll down even further and get breakdowns of every single US state or region in Russia or Canada, all that kind of stuff. It's all there in one place and very minimalistic. Um, the user interface is very simple. Uh, there are no ads, none of that kind of stuff. There's also some other pages. There's like a wiki for information. There's like a map if people want like a map, um, all that kind of stuff. But yeah. What hurdles did you have to experience? Because I know you had to translate some of it for Ch to, from Chinese. So how did you deal with that? I've had a lot of interesting hurdles. Um, I think the hardest parts have been gathering data from countries that are not very transparent with the things that are happening in their country. So um, gathering data from places like China and Russia and North Korea, it's very hard to get data from these places. And the data I do get is hard to know if you can even trust. Um, it's really up to the governments to be transparent with what's happening inside of their country for the world. I'm only able to get my data directly from the source, which is primarily local health departments of every country. Every, you know, we have like the CDC in the United States. Um, every state and region is kind of their own thing in China or America, wherever you go. So it's been kind of a hurdle to get information from more authoritarian uh, countries. But yeah, there's some other hurdles, but whatever. Um, how does it feel to create such a powerful mechanism that create, made such an impact on the world? It's, it's been very interesting. I think one of the coolest things is the power of the internet. I'm able to just make a website on my laptop in my bedroom and also learn how to code that entirely through the internet on the laptop in my bedroom and be able to share that to hundreds of millions of people all around the globe. Anyone with an internet connection and any kind of device like your phone or an Xbox or really anything that can browse the internet can, vote, can go visit the website I made. And that makes it really accessible and also it loads really fast. There's nothing to download, any of that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Um, do you have any advice for young Jewish teens that want to make a change? And can you expand on how your Jewish background played a role in what you do? Sure, uh, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, overall, there's never been a better time in the entire history of the universe to learn how to code a website. You can go on YouTube or Khan Academy or any of these kind of websites, and there's so much free content out there to learn pretty much anything. It's, it's pretty incredible. All you need is like a laptop or a phone and an internet connection, and you can learn pretty much anything. Um, I just kind of hope my doctor isn't learning everything online, <laughs> but um, you can learn how to code websites, how to code apps, how to do all kinds of things. There's always something happening around the world. There's always some kind of earthquake somewhere or a pandemic or just all, there's always something happening in the world. And there's always a way that you can learn how to code some app or whatever and help your local community or the entire world. Um, it's really, it truly has never been easier. Um, for example, around two years ago, there was a lot of fires in Australia uh, and I was bored. So I was working on coding this app that if you had like an Apple watch would show you like fires that were around you. Um, so again, there's always something happening around the world and I didn't know how to code Apple Watch apps. I just went on YouTube and just typed in, how do I code Apple Watch apps? And there's like a billion videos. Um, yeah. Um, how does it feel to make such a big change at such a young age? Um, it's definitely helped me know what I want to do in my life. I have a lot of ideas for tech stuff that I want to do, but it's also been really cool to inspire lots of other young people to do amazing things with technology. Um, a lot of people have come to me asking questions. How do they code this? How did I get started with that? And it's been, it's been pretty cool to point them in the right direction as others once pointed me. Um, I, a lot of people have been inspired. I've seen other people have even made like their own versions of coronavirus tracking websites for the local community, which has been pretty cool. Um, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with technology. I feel like we barely scraped the surface. Just wait for a few more, a few more years. What's next for you and your website? Um, I'm actually gonna relaunch it pretty soon because there's people are still using it and the pandemic is still going on. So what I'm gonna do is make it a bit more useful to see like how the pandemic is changing. Right now you kind of just see the direct stats, but I think it'd be really cool to see 
all kinds of graphs so you can visualize the different waves everyone talk about. Um, I want to have on the quick facts section, I want to break it up into two parts and include the past like month, all the data for that. Um, what else? Um, but as the pandemic does come to a close though, I don't want to just make the website like a blank white page um, once the website's over or once the pandemic's over and just have the data stop updating. Um, my plan for what I'm going to do with the site is turn it kind of into a free repository for information on coronavirus. So if you want to, if you're a future researcher and you want to download like a large Excel file of every single day there were this many cases in that specific country, I'll have all that data for free and maybe cool comparisons to other pandemics around the world um, that have happened in the past, like the Spanish flu and just the flu in general, all that kind of stuff. Just kind of right there as a free repository for anyone for the future. Um, because the website is linked in so many places around the world. There's so many random Facebook posts or interviews and all this kind of stuff. Um, and be a waste to just have those links go to nothing. So It's been great to have you here. Thank you for coming. Um, we really appreciate all that you've done with your website. For sure. Thank you. Thank you.